Hello students. Today we are going to discuss our poem, Fire and Ice. This is written by Robert Frost. Now, Robert Frost wrote this poem in 1920. And this poem is also included in his Pulitzer Prize winning book, New Hampshire. Now, what is fire and ice? Remember that some people, or we can say there are various theories. Some scientists say that this world will be destroyed due to fire. Maybe that because of global warming or because the sun would get very, very hot and so hot that if all the uh, all the people and vegetation and everything on this earth would be completely destroyed. This is one of the theory. There is another theory opposite to it. Some people or some scientists say that it could be possible that slowly the sun would become cooler and cooler and there would be again an ice age on earth. And that would lead to a complete destruction of earth or its people, its vegetation and everything. These are two different theories. Now in this poem, remember that fire and ice, these are symbols of human emotions. That what are these two human emotions? Fire represents passion. Passion or des desire, a very strong desire of something, to get something, that is fire. And ice represents hatred or insensitivity. These are the two embodiments or these are the two personifications that have been used by Robert Frost in this poem. Now let us begin with this poem. I will just move on to another image. We'll move on to our poem. I showed you the earth so that you could, you could understand it better. This is the poem, though it was written there also, you would better understand it. So here, remember that fire and ice. This is the poem written by Robert Frost. So, some say the world will end in fire. Some people say that the whole world will be destroyed due to desire. Desire is a very strong driving factor. The desire can be of anything, of money, name, fame, power. It could be imperialism. You know that one country fights against the other and wants to capture, capture it or take hold over it. Right now, you, you can see China is also uh, doing the same thing in Galwan Valley, in Arunachal Pradesh. We have already seen World War I and World War II, the most destructive events in the history of mankind. They were all a result of fire. They were all a result of very deep passion or desire. So whether we call it uh, fire, whether we call it greed, whether we call it conflict, whether we called it avarice. Avarice means extreme desire for money or extreme anger, that is fury or cruelty. We, we remember all the dictators, we remember Hitler, etc. So, and lust, the power, the strong desire to get something, success or name or fame, etc. So this feeling of getting everything has always led the world to destruction. And World War I and World War II has been a testimony to it. Now, that is okay. We can understand that, yes, hatred, a very fiery desire, hatred, uh, hatred is ice, uh, desire and wants Fire can destroy everything. Now, we let our emotions rule us. We move to an extent that they start controlling us. And in this way, they will lead to destruction. But there is one other opinion also. From what I have tasted of desire, 
now poet, poet is saying that from whatever incidences and all the examples that I have seen in this world about destroying because of desire or because of want or uh, fire, I hold with those who favor fire. I am in support of those people who say that, yes, the world will be destroyed by fire. Strong, deep emotion to want something. So I believe in that. But there is one more case he's adding. But if it had to perish twice, the first reason is not wrong. But he is giving us a situation that suppose the world happens to be destroyed twice. Though nothing is destroyed twice in this world, once destroyed is completely destroyed. But suppose it happens, then what will happen? I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great. We have, are coming to now the second view that the earth can again be wrapped in a cover of snow and it could be uh, the extremities of temperatures going down and human survival or any other species survival becomes impossible. So here he is discussing ice. Ice is hatred. You know, people hate each other. You can directly take a sword and you can pe kill a person. That is one way. And everybody would know because you can be in a fit of anger. You can be very furious. But there is another way to kill a person. You can kill a person by hating him. By being insensitive to him. This is another way. You know, the, right now we have seen the example of Sushant Singh Rajput. It's, he has been killed in a way. Because there are these other forces working on him. He has been a, a victim of hatred, of insensitivity. So both the ways are right in killing. A person can be killed by sword also. And a person can be killed psychologically, emotionally also. So he is saying that ice is also competent enough, has the potential enough. Because hatred and insensitivity is also spread in every nook and corner of the world. So it also has the potential for inner destruction. Though this destruction is slow and steady. It is a little bit slow, but it is continuous. It can also in the long run completely kill a man or completely kill the civilization or the whole earth. Now, ice would be just as good as fire. Fire, will, on the on one hand, may lead to rapid destruction, while ice will lead to silent damage. Fire is pure passion, while ice is pure reason. You are killing somebody with a reason. You are uh, applying all the diplomacies, all, all the tactics tactics you know that sometimes it's not always the world war that's uh, that are happening sometimes there are cold war also between different countries so here we have seen that in this poem how these emotions are personified like desire and hatred are personified and they are uh, being given so much of power that they can destroy the whole earth this is it so I think you would have understood. Now let us move on to discussing the poetic devices and the rhyming scheme of this poem. See the first line. It's ending with fire. And the third line which is desire. So it is AA. Ice and fire again is. The ice is B and fire is A. So in this whole poem the rhyming scheme is. A, B, A, A, B, C, B, C, B. This is the rhyming scheme. Now remember, there is another poetic device being used in the very first two lines. Can you see the repetition of word or phrase, some say, some say, being repeated in two consecutive lines? This 
poetic device where such a phrase or word is repeated into consecutive lines is known as anaphora. A N A P H O R A, anaphora. In the very first line again, we will find alliteration also, where the same sound is repeated at in the beginning of the word. And which word it is? W. World will. You can see in the first, first line, world will. In the W sound is alliterated and alliteration has been used here. Another thing has been used in the very first line and that is assonance. Assonance means a, con a consonant sound which is more prominent. Now, which is this assonant sound which is more prominent here? It is a will in fire will end in fire so can you see the i word here i in will i in in and i in fire they are at different positions so they are known as assonance they are also repeated but that is not alliteration it is called it is assonance because the position is different now another one come to the last line of the first paragraph I hold with those who favor fire. First of all, favor fire. F sound is alliterating. So it is alliteration. Then, can you see the vowel sound? H-O-L-D uh, hold. So O. Then those, they also having an O. That is vowel. Who also having an O. So here there is a repetition of vowel sound at different places. And so it is known as assonance. Okay. So earlier it was consonance and now it is assonance. Now see this word, uh, a meaning here, perish. What does perish mean? That, but if it had to perish twice, if the earth had to die or end, twice so perish means die or end and in the last line we see that there is a word suffice to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice suffice means sufficient or enough so ice is also as competent as fire to destroy the whole world the only thing is it is slow and steady. Please revise this poem. I hope you would have understood it. And later I will send you the question answers.